I told you I'd do a little bit more on 8.5 because kind of we just, we didn't quite fit it all in fourth hour or on Friday. I don't know if you guys had a chance to start the homework yet or not. The homework should be an awful lot like this, but I figured I would at least finish this question with you guys before we start at 8.6 and we'll, we'll start 8.6 today. <clears throat> so 8.6 Eight seven and eight eight are all kind of the same topic. It's broken up into three sections just because of the way the problems are presented, but they're all the same problems. So I, I kind of wanted to start eight six today so that we could be done with eight six tomorrow. And then that'll leave us uh, the wind period, the longer hour to do eight seven and then Friday for eight eight. Um, and then that way we're at least going to be done before Friday or before the weekend. Um, usually I take the last day before the AP test to kind of go over what types of stuff you should bring with you, you know, what to expect. Um, and that, you know, that generally really only applies to those who this might be their only AP test they're taking. So most of the AP tests are set up very similar. I mean, obviously the test itself is different, but so I, I think what I'll do is by Friday, so maybe probably during wind time in the morning on Wednesday, Thursday, I'll probably try to set that up into Schoology so that I'll, I'll at least have it there on the main Schoology page, you know, the info that I like to present just so you guys can know what to expect. And then if, if I get a chance, I'll go over it Friday. Um, I was kind of, I, I don't know why, but in my head, I was just assuming I wouldn't see anybody on, when, on Monday. But then, as you guys are coming, I realized our class doesn't start till noon. So, technically, everybody will be done in here. And I realize some of you take the afternoon off, but... <clears throat> We're clearly not going to do anything on Monday if, you know, if we meet, but um, if nothing, we can kind of see how it went and talk about it. I don't know. I, I, we're not technically allowed to talk about it, so we'll see. Okay. Uh, example five from 8.5. It's slightly different because the section that's created is between two curves. <coughs> And you're not given any kind of numbers or info. You're just, you're given the picture. Where's my pen? There we go. Okay, so it says, let R be the region bounded by the graphs of Y equals X squared and Y equals 2 minus X squared. So the pictures on the AP test, they will usually be something like this, and then they'll have the letter in the section to kind of tell you as a description. So that'll be region R. Find the volume of the solid that has R as its base if every cross section perpendicular to the Y axis. Okay, so every rec... Uh, it's a rectangle, yeah, rectangle height three. So perpendicular to y-axis means every single rectangle will go like this. Well, that's kind of slightly annoying. Um, let's go with Aiden. Aiden, why is that um, going to be difficult for us? Uh, I mean, they all, depending on where the line is, they'll all go all the way across the blue section over there, purple, whatever it is. Should I just present it to anybody? Maya. Why is this one going to be a little more difficult? What information do we need? Okay, so we're trying to find the volume 
which means we are going to integrate the area of the rectangle. Well, I'll just start us with this before we figure out what we need. This is dy because it's horizontal. What aren't we sure about? Okay, so this red line that I drew yeah. represents a rectangle that's coming out of the paper. And this entire blue section will have rectangles coming out of it. We need all the stuff. We need all the stuff. How do we find area rectangle? Okay, length times width, base times height, however you want to phrase it. Well, the one thing that they were told is that the height of the rectangle is three. Okay, correct. So I'll just, I guess I'll call it base, just because the way this picture is laid out. So the base of the rectangle times three, this is what we need to figure out. How long is the bottom of that rectangle? It does change. It does change. We do know, though. Do you guys remember how to find the length of a line? Top minus bottom, Top minus bottom or right minus left. So I specifically need to know this info and this info. This is a rough start. How many people did the homework? Yeah, you don't have to raise that high. It's okay. I, I was noticing more that your hand was an upper known rather than you trying to prop somebody else's up. <clears throat> what? What is being difficult on this? Oh. I was kind of, kind of waiting for people to figure this out. I mean, that, so you want to put the two equations equal to each other? Uh, I remember we did that for something. We did? We did. The reason we set the equations equal to each other in a previous section was to find out where they intersect. So if we, if we took the two parabola equations equal, that tells us where their points are going to be the same. So we absolutely can do that because we're going to need to know that info at some point. Um, 2x squared equals 2x is plus or minus 1. Okay, so this point is going to be negative one something. This point is going to be positive one something. To find out the height of that point, we could be, plug it in either one of those two equations because we should get the same answer either way. So I'll probably just pick y equals x squared. So negative one squared is one. Positive one squared is one. Okay. Okay, good start, Troy. Oh, we got something. Maria, help me out. Okay, how come would, so like put it in terms of y? Yeah. How come we would do that? Okay, good. So, be, uh, where's the highlighter? Because we're doing this horizontally, and the integral is dy, or in terms of y, currently neither of those two equations are in terms of y. So we need our equations to also say equals y stuff. So I'm going to take each one of the two equations and then solve it for x, because that's how we get it in terms of y. 
Okay, so this one I'd have to do square root. Um, this one I would have to add x squared, subtract y, and then take square root. And then the plus and minus shows up like that. Do you guys need me to go over the four equations? Like try to color code them at all? Would that help? So let me erase my rectangle to kind of clear this up a little bit. Um, let's do a green, I guess. So x equals square root of y is going to be that one. Um, negative square root of y is going to be this one. Yeah. And then I'll go over the 2 minus x squared equation. Uh, positive would be on the positive half. Um, negative would be over here. Now, it's actually pretty important that you know which line is which. Because if we're doing right minus left, it's absolutely going to be different. Okay, so I have a horizontal sample rectangle right here. As I'm going upwards from the bottom of the shape to the top, because I'm going horizontally, so I'm going to start my integration at zero, and I'm going to stop at a height of 1. Now, the reason I'm going to stop at a height of 1 is because my equations on the right and left change. So I'm going to have this green one, which is square root of y, minus the blue one, which is negative square root of y, times a height of 3. And then I'm going to have to do a second integral to go from 1 to 2 of the red line minus the purple line. And they both end up being plus because you're minusing a negative. Now this particular problem would have been a lot easier had we done it vertically because all the equations and all the information we were given was kind of vertical. But we have to change it to horizontal information if that's what's being done. I'm not getting a great feeling on this one. What? Ask away. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not sure what part is throwing you off, or did you just forget a massive amount of information over two days weekend? Friday, it seemed like it was going okay. I'm really worried about the AP test being out on Monday now. Monday morning at 8 o'clock. Am I, am I just totally losing you? Are you guys just awkwardly silent today? Renown, yes. thoughts? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's like... mm, those are very specific, um, very detailed uh, filled thoughts. 
But yeah, I, I like, I, I understand it like when you like block through with us, but I don't know if I could do it like that. Okay. I mean, I, I guess the reason I ask is because I'm, I'm trying to present these to you as how you're going to have to walk through them on your own. So we're trying to integrate an area to get a volume. To figure out the area of that rectangle, I would have to take the information to find area of a rectangle. Um, we were given a height of three, so I knew how to put that in. The base is where all of the work was because the length of this line was kind of a pain in the butt. Okay. I mean, I, this is about as difficult as you'll run into for these style problems because of the way it was presented. We had to find these points before we could do anything else. Um, we had to switch all the equations to the other orientation. And honestly, we didn't even finish the problem yet. I mean, like, I, <clears throat> if you had to finish this on your own, the minus the negative is what actually makes this doable and workable because you would be able to integrate that. Oh, I forgot the three. Should I walk through the actual integration with you? How about the second one? This is the one I'm a little concerned with. What would you have to do to integrate the second one again? This, this would be u substitution. So 2 minus y would be your u substitution. The derivative of 2 minus y would be negative 1 dy. So we would need a negative symbol in here to make the U substitution work and a negative symbol out front to balance it. And then you would integrate 6U to the half DU. I mean, you guys are going to have to do this on your own on Monday. That's why I'm trying to emphasize these details. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep moving on since nobody's really saying anything. I went straight to example two in 8.6. Oi. Let me use that. Okay, so I drew y equals negative x plus 1, and I left it as just that portion because it made an enclosed region. It says, set up and evaluate each integral that gives the volume of the solid by revolving the region about the x-axis. So... Revolving around the x-axis means that we are going to take that triangular shape and rotate it around the x-axis. Now, if we did that, I don't know if you can picture this, it would give you a cone shape.
if we took that triangle and rotated it around, that's the best I can draw. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that helps. Think of a sideways cone. That's the shape you would get if we rotated the triangle. Now, our goal for finding the volume is still going to be the same as the last section. That's why I presented it the way I did. If I were to take this cone, I need to, I need, there we go. If I were to take this cone and cut a slice into it, what would the cross section look like? It'd be a circle. This may be a good time for me to get my... This was the this was the uh, um, project that somebody made. They decided to learn how to weld, and they wanted to make a a model for showing rotations. So actually, it's close enough. So if you've got the little triangle in quadrant one, and you rotate this shape, God, it's so hard without a handle. very hard without the handle. So if you rotate it, I mean, obviously there's kind of your cone shape, but if you want to know what the cross section would look like, think of what it would look like from this end. Because if you take a slice anywhere, it's going to look like a circle. This, the whole, the fact that you're rotating it is creating a circle. So, we are going to do the exact same thing. We're going to find the area of the cross section. So the shape that's made, if you were to just slice it. On this one, that's the area of a circle. It's vertical. So my cross section slice would be a vertical circle. Basically, anything done vertically is going to be dx. Anything done horizontally is going to be dy. Okay, area of a circle. How do we find area of a circle? Pi r squared. The radius of this circle would be right here, that blue line, that, oh, it, um, that blue line, that'll be easier for you to see, okay, so the radius is the information we need, well, how do I find the length of that radius, it's just top minus bottom still, I mean, I, I'm trying to present it to you from the beginning so that they're all similar. <clears throat> so the top of this line is on this angle. So the top of the line is y equals negative x plus 1. The bottom of the line has a height of y equals 0. So my radius is going to go from those two pieces of information. Now, you can, you can put the pi out front if you want. Um, so negative x plus 1 minus 0, which you don't have to write minus 0, but still. Um, now I have to figure out numbers to put on there. 
my first circle would be at the far end of this cone, which is at x equals 0. My last circle would be right, there we go. My last circle would be right there at the tip of the cone, which is at x equals 1. So then if I integrate this, I'm going to get the volume of the cone. Now first thing, is it, is it hard for you guys to picture the shape in your head? See, I was all I was all ready for this these sections this year, and then we didn't have time. A super easy way for you to do these is to take a straw, like a, a, a an example or a model, you know, like an activity. Is you take a straw, and that straw is going to be the axis of rotation. So, like on this one, the x-axis, I wrote that little red circular circular uh, notation. That would be like the straw. And then you cut out, out of paper, the enclosed region that's being rotated. And you tape it to the straw. And if you take the straw and roll it in your hands, it'll show you what it looks like being rotated very fast. And it's a very easy way for you to kind of be able to start visualizing what a lot of these would look like. That, I mean, that, that's kind of what I had planned, but we don't have time for that even close. Um, I'm trying to think if I have some more models or something I could find. I, it's just, I know some of you are really good at 3D mental images and knowing what things look like, and some of you are not. Um, the good thing is these, you don't technically have to be able to know what it looks like as long as you can understand that the cross section would be a circle that's created from spinning this line. And then this blue thing would be the radius. And that's how all of these are gonna be set up. Now they're not all gonna be straight lines, so they're not all gonna be cones. Like if we had um, a parabola or if we had, you know, other weird curvy shapes, when you rotate them, you get all sorts of different weird 3D pieces. Do you guys think you could draw this one? Try to draw what this would look like if you can't draw 3D, that's fine, but just draw the two-dimensional piece that's going to be rotated. So draw the region that's being rotated.
Okay, I kind of wanted to purposely draw one here for you that has nothing 3D on it because I, I know a lot of you just kind of give up on that. I've seen the 3D pictures before. They're pretty rough. If this is your two-dimensional shape that is being rotated, automatically the size of your two-dimensional shape is going to be the radius. No matter how complicated your picture is going to be, the radius will always start at the axis of revolution. So you're going to have to be told what it's being rotated around. It's not always going to be the x-axis or y-axis. You're going to have to be told what it rotates around. The radius length is always exactly axis of revolution to the outside of your object. So, I mean, that's kind of how a radius works. If you think of a circle, the center of your circle is what you took to rotate around. Like when you guys, probably, you guys were probably first taught to make a circle by like tying a string and then, or like holding a string with your finger and then drawing a circle. Did you guys ever do that? Oh my gosh. Um, how about a compass? You probably used a compass. Did you use them in geometry a lot? Okay, well, the point of the compass that's supposed to stick in the paper is the center of the circle, which is the same as your axis of revolution. You're revolving around that spot. So we're having a line that's being revolved around instead of a point. So the radius automatically will start whatever you're being rotated around, because that's how radius works. And it goes to the outside of the object. I'm presenting it this way because as we go further, it won't be rotated around the x or y axis, and it's not always going to have only one radius because pretty soon we're going to have shapes that have the middle cut out of them, and so we'll have more than one radius. So I'm, I'm trying to present it like this because that's how we measure the radius. Okay. So without me even being able to see this three-dimensional picture, I can still go through and find the answer of the volume. I'm going to integrate the area of the circle that's made. Um, I'm doing this vertically, so dx. And then I was told from x equals 0 to x equals 4. So area of a circle, pi r squared. Radius. Well, on my picture, I drew the radius from the axis revolution to the outside. The top is square root of x minus the bottom, which is 0. Why do we do top minus bottom for the radius? So that the answer is positive. Are you asking me if you need to show it on the AP test? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. Uh, I'm doing it purposely for now because when we start getting to... The, today's is called disk method because the cross-section is a solid circle that looks like a, like a coin or a disk. When we move to the washer method, which is next, um, it's generally never going to be zero or depending on what it's rotated around. Are you okay with that blue line being the radius? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is find the length of this line. The top number, like, like if this was an 8 and this was a 0, you know the length is 8. Yeah. The problem is that the top number is constantly changing. Okay. 
and the top number is always represented by that equation. Oh, okay. So instead of writing a single number, we write an equation that stands for a number okay. in place of, but, but top minus bottom would just give you a positive answer. Um, why don't we just actually finish this one because we haven't been finishing very many of them. Uh, I'm going to pull the pi out front. Square root of x squared is x. Um, so x integrated would become 1 half x squared from 0 to 4. So I'm going to have pi times half of 16 minus pi times half of 0, so 0. So 8 pi would be my volume. I'm going to write it as units cubed. Usually they'll ask for an exact answer, so 8 pi. If this was a calculator portion of the test, then you give a decimal. Um, instead of pi. And then make sure you use the pi button on your calculator instead of putting in. Actually, now that I say that, sometimes they tell you what to use for pi. Sometimes they tell you to just use 314 or something. Okay, we should probably do one with revolving around the y axis. And then that's pretty much going to be our hour, most likely. We get done at 4? Yeah, 104. Okay, y equals x squared, revolve about y-axis from 0 to 4. That's kind of an odd one because y equals x squared. So I'm, I'm assuming this means x equals 0 to x equals 4. But it should kind of say... And the reason I'm assuming that, mm, I don't like the way this one's set up. So we all know what y equals x squared looks like, but The issue is that you can't revolve something if it's revolving on itself. So I'm assuming this is intended to be in quadrant one. I'm also assuming that it's, I bet you this is supposed to be y values. Uh, I will tell you on the AP test that they are awfully specific with everything. So you won't be wondering that. I'm assuming this is y equals 0 to y equals 4. So this would be the point 2, 4. And then this is most likely supposed to be the radius. It makes a big difference if it's x equals 0 and 4 or y equals 0 and 4. Well, let's just go with this one for now. So if it's being rotated that way, the radius... So we still want area of a circle, but this is going to be dy. And we're just going to go with this picture going from y equals 0 at the bottom to y equals 4 at the top, the area of the circle would still be pi r squared, but the radius, the radius, we're going to have to do the right information minus the left. So this we would have to solve for x. And we're not using the negative square root of y just because of this picture. So the right-hand side 
would be x equals square root of y. The left-hand side would be x equals 0. So we'd have square root of y minus 0. Oh, I forgot to put the numbers. I thought Wash method started in 8.7, but I get, my guess is 8.6 is learning disk and Wash method revolving around x and y axis. 8.7 is going to be disk method not on x and y axis, and 8.8 .8 will be washer not on x and y axis. Um, I don't really care about the section naming or numbering. I just know that I want to start this part tomorrow. Um, Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to. This is about all farther we can get. Uh, it's not necessarily this period, but we've got like 10 extra minutes on six period. This is definitely all the farther they'll get. Um, if you guys start any of the homework yet, obviously, don't do washer method yet. Washer method is usually going to consist of the shape that you get being rotated the pictures that we have sit flush on what's being rotated around if your picture that's being rotated does not directly sit on what's being rotated around it will be washer method so I'll start tomorrow with that it's going to be a busy, hectic week. Um, I know some of you are going to be gone for different AP tests. Is that probably correct? Do you guys have AP tests? This, some of you have AP tests this week? OK. If, if you're gone, know that I'll be recording everything. And you're welcome to come in during wind time for help if you want, things like that. And we'll just kind of get what we can done during the week. <clears throat> 